Good morning to Common Life Church. Uh, today is Friday, June 4th, and we are on day two of the latest Bible reading plan, Serving God. And being that we just wrapped up uh, our previous Bible reading plan, uh, Nine Truths for Living God's Way, right? it's time for us to take that, take what we've learned, uh, take what we've gained, uh, take the things that we've wrestled with, and apply it to how we can better serve God. Right, and so this Bible reading plan, serving God, just just makes sense. It feels like it's a good progression forward into the right direction. And so, with that said, today our theme is taking your faith to the marketplace. You know, oftentimes when we think about serving God, right, we have this mentality that that kind of work is, is reserved for for pastors, right? It's like the, it's, it's reserved for people who have that calling on their life, right? It's the it's the pastor's job. It's the leadership's job, right? To take the gospel and spread it. I'm just here to go to church. I'm just here to hear hear a message and um, be on my way, right? And while a lot of that might be true to an extent, you see, the greater call and responsibility is actually placed on the people who make up the church, right? The responsibility is placed on them to take what they are what they are learning, to take what they are experiencing. To take the lessons they've they've received, right, and take the you know, the ultimately the transformation that is taking place in their life as a result of the gospel, right? Take that, and as they head back into the world, use those things, right, to exemplify the love of Christ in the world, right? The fact of the matter is, we all have been called to share the gospel in the world, right? It's not just me, not pastors. They're called to share the gospel, but all of us collectively and as individuals are called right, to share, to spread, to speak great things of the gospel. There, there is this man by the name of Charles Colson, better known as Chuck Colson. And you know, according to my research, he was an attorney who served as a political advisor, as special counsel to President Nixon. Yeah, and if you know anything about President Nixon's term, not a lot of good came out of it, right? Thanks to the whole Watergate scandal. But to make a long story short, Chuck found himself in prison as a result of uh, serving under that regime and he was convicted of some crimes. But that was his life prior to knowing Jesus. And then in 1973, Chuck was saved and founded a nonprofit ministry called Prison Fellowship. And so the reason why we share that with you this morning is that Chuck is a great example of what it means to take your faith to the marketplace in the form of ministry. Right? He used his gifts and his talents to share the gospel and to bring glory to God. Right? He used the things that he was passionate about, the things that he was good at as a means to bring glory to God. You see, the role of laity is crucial in the spreading of the gospel. And it is crucial in the growth of any church, right? If you find a church where the pastor is the only one that does work, more than likely it's going to be kind of tiny. It's going to be small. Maybe not maybe not in size, but in terms of maybe faith in action, right? But, you know, the, the participation, right? The hands-on uh, ability of the laity of the church is important. And just in case you have no idea what laity is, it's basically the ordinary people who make up the church. Right? It is the lay people. Right, Another word for that is laity. You see, without the laity, the early church wouldn't have grown like it did. Right, A lot of the growth that the early church experienced was a result of how the laity, the lay people, man, just in their passion, decided that they wanted to share the gospel with anybody and everybody that would listen to what they had to say. You see, it's you know without the laity, the church would not have conquered the ancient world in the in the way that it did, right? The laity is responsible for, responsible for the gospels pushed forward and the progression that our modern society you know enjoys today. You see, it's the laity that pushes the gospel forward, and we as the laity need to ensure that we are being educated, that we are being trained, and that we are being mobilized so that we can effectively take our place. Uh, excuse me, take our faith to the marketplace. Another example we are given this morning in our Bible reading plan is Martin Luther, right? The great theologian. 
It's actually through his push as a, as lady, right? He wasn't a pastor, right? As, as lady that challenged the current systems at the time, and as a result, he wrote his what his famous ninety five thesis right? that would ultimately bring forth the Reformation, right? A change that you and I benefit from when it comes to the way we learn, the way that we worship, and the way that we engage with Scripture, and the way that we engage as Christ's church. Right? Martin Luther even took a hiatus from the university that he was teaching at so that he could translate the Bible into German so that the Word of God would become more accessible to everyday people. You see, our role as, as lay people is important when it comes to Jesus' church. Right? So let us take a look at our, our scripture for today. It's going to be Acts chapter 8 verses 1 to 7. And I know that we are assigned 1 to 4, but let's make it to verse 7 because I like what verse 7 has to say. But this is what it says. And Saul approved of his execution. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Right? Devout men buried Stephen and made great lamentation over him. But Saul was ravaging the church and entering house after house. He dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. Now those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Remember, the pe- those that are preaching the word are not the apostles, right? They're, some, they're somewhere else, right? It's, it's the lay people. And Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. And the crowds with one accord paid attention to what was being said by Philip when they heard him and saw the signs that he did. In verse 7, I'm sorry, we're going to verse 8. And for unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who had them, and many were paralyzed, or who were paralyzed or lame were healed. And then verse 8, this is the one I want to share with you guys, is that there was so much joy in that city. So, right, so Stephen is stoned at the order of Saul. And yes, it's that Saul who most famously becomes Paul. And there is great persecution taking place. Right, Saul was ravaging the church. He was doing everything that he could to destroy it. He was trying to instill fear into anybody who would proclaim Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Right, he was ordering men and women to be dragged out of their homes for believing the gospel. And so the excitement right, for spreading the gospel as the early church, I imagine it was, it was tough. Right, like I imagine that it was on the low morale. It was scary, right? And, and you would need to risk your life your freedom to even speak of Jesus. And I don't think many people were willing to do that. So it is seen. But that doesn't stop those who were scattered from preaching the word. And remember, these are not the apostles. These are people just who have heard the word of God and they've been changed. Right? Right? Sharing the gospel wasn't ideal in Jerusalem. So people like Philip said, well, I'll go down to Samaria and share this good news I have with them. He does so. An amazing thing happens. Uh, People were being freed and people were being healed. And then verse 8 tells us uh, at the end, right, the the end result, there was much joy in that city. You see, we can't let something like persecution stop us from sharing the gospel. We can't let the fear of being persecuted or just fear in general prevent us from moving forth with the gospel. You see, there is a need for us to take the gospel with us wherever we go. There is a need for us to take the gospel uh, to other places, even the unlikely, the unlikeliest of places like Samaria. You see, we can be of service to God by serving Him. We can serve Him by taking what He has given us, uh, what He has shown us, and what we have experienced with Him, and we take that into the world and share it. We put on display, right? Not just with our words, but with our our, our actions and even our body language, right? Because if you don't share it, if we do not share it, if I don't share it. Who will? Right? If we don't take our faith to the marketplace, how will anyone ever hear of the gospel? How will people get a glimpse of the light of Christ that is supposed to be shining in our lives? And so, church, I implore with you the way that you and I will go about serving God, the way that you and I will continually go about serving our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is by taking the faith that we have, by taking the transformation that's, that is occurring in our lives. And take it with us into places like the marketplace. And so I, I, I pray that you would have enough courage. Right? You, have, you have something to share. And I pray that you would share it because you know 
who you are speaking of, and it is not yourself, but it is Jesus Christ. Church, it's Friday. That means uh, Sunday is just around the corner. Uh, I can't wait to worship with all of you this coming Lord's Day. So until then, I, I, I hope and pray uh, that you will stay safe, that you will stay healthy, and that the Lord will bless you and keep you until we meet again. May you go in peace. Amen and amen.